Hello and welcome to a new season of the Experts of Devon Road to Glory series. In the last season, after a two season absence, we returned to Division 5 in some style, winning all 14 games of the season and finishing on 42 points. And for this season, our objective is to simply survive and establish ourselves in Division 5. We were relegated from this level quite easily last time we were here, so this will be an interesting challenge. As you can see, this is the squad the squad looks like at the moment, but there are a few, few new faces in here that you won't have seen before. So, let's take a run down on who the new boys are of Knights of Sardinia. Introducing... Wei jun -er, a veteran Chinese midfielder who was the second highest appearance maker for his old club. He joins at the age of 33 as a replacement for Sebastian Quimado. As a 12-bar midfielder, he provides some much needed strength to help us compete in this division. He is now the highest skilled midfielder in the team, which is a good boost, especially considering the decline of Sergei Kvyatkovsky, who is now 37 and has dropped to 9 skill, and it doesn't like to go back up anytime soon. Wei joins the club for half a million Nihon, which is a very good price considering what we need to compete in this division. Secondly, we've got one for the future. This guy I expect to be our final midfielder in the team of the future. It's Azrat Zairi. The Moroccan is the most expensive of the three signs we made this off-season, but he's at a good price because I have a feeling that he will be a very valuable member when he finally matures and gets into his early 20s, which will be when the team peaks. He will be our final midfielder and will form the midfield partnership with Roma, Hargreaves, Hesslink and Tatao Essa. His compatibility needs a lot of work however, so we'll be subbing on at the end of games in order to get him some match experience. He has no visible SQs, but he has plenty of hiddens, with both the good and bad kinds. Unfortunately he has both, but hopefully the good ones that he has will outweigh his negatives. And finally, we have signed a new young striker in Irfan Ghazali. The 17 year old has plenty of pace and should make for the ideal farm later on down the line when we look to sell him on. In fact, we will guarantee a profit if we do sell him later on down the line, as we acquired him as a 17 year old, his value is 1.2 million econ. We have paid just 600,000 econ for his signature. Complete bargain there, a great bit of business. Hopefully he can turn out to be double jumping sooner rather than later. He will be the new backup striker to Celso Mota, which means that Curtis Horton has now been sacked, along with Sebastian Quimado, to keep the squad size down somewhat, as I feel one of the weaknesses in Division 5 last time, we had two bigger squads. So that's our squad for this season, we made three new additions and got rid of two players, that leaves us with a squad of 17 and the young players are made to play a more prominent role, with Alvito Aroma and Raymond Hargreaves almost as strong as new veterans midfield signing Wei jun -er. But so there's one big question hanging over this team, is it good enough for Division 5? Well, to find out, let's see who our new opponents are in our new division. For Season 35, Knights of Zernia will be playing their football in Division 520. And here's who Division 520 has in it. A few familiar faces and some new ones too. First up is a brand new opponent, Blue Force, first alphabetically, managed by Michael Washington. They are a 7 bar team with a squad value of 37 million econ. Wait a minute, this team doesn't look like one that would be in Division 5 now, does it? It seems a bit awfully weak. Well, they were incredibly weak. They have actually just been promoted from Division 6. They won the title in what was probably a weaker division than the one we had to face last season, so they're really below par. However, they do have a lot of money in the tank, and they use that to buy a brand new player of starting quality. He's of the same skill path as Pim Van de Kreese and yet a bit older. You'll see what I mean in a moment. That defender's name is Ulian Wojciechulescu, the 24-13 defender with good heading. He will make that defence a bit more harder to break down than it already was. They also have a very promising young keeper in Nicholas Corvello, who's likely to be the first choice for them. But up front, they are sorely lacking. Federico Barros is their best midfielder, and he's 33 years old and 8 skills. They do have some promising players like Frederick Whitehead and Hardy and Imianti, but apart from that, this squad has nothing really to shout home about. So let's move on to our second opponents, who are actually quite similar to Blue Force. Our second opponents are deep, which is an apt name to describe them because they have very deep pockets. They're a bit similar to Blue Force though, and they are a very weak squad overall, but have made some strong purchases recently to add to the strength of their side, namely a defender and midfielder, which makes them a better opponent to face than Blue Force. Blue Force are playing catch up a bit now then, really. 
They have signed two highly skilled players recently in Fred Keeland at 29-14, which is extremely dangerous. Meanwhile, they've also signed Aurelio Rajoy, a 34-13 defender. Otherwise, the squad is very weak, although Jamie Bowling has loads of potential. Heriberto Di Toledo provides a bit more threat up front, and which is the main reason why they are also stronger than Blue Force, even before the big money purchases of both sides. Ronaldo Santoro is also their prom most promising young defender, but I think they will be fighting to stay up to be honest. They don't have what it takes to challenge at the top end, considering the teams that are in the division. Speaking of which, here's the first familiar face from previous seasons for Knights fans. This is Gorgie Thistle, who we faced two seasons ago. They ended up finishing second in the division that season and got promoted via the playoffs. Now the next season, they managed to stay up, so they are playing their second consecutive season in Division 5. Knights failed to beat Gorgie Fissel in the two previous encounters that the, the teams have met with each other, so they will prove to be a difficult opposition, but they will be, also be a team that since we've faced before, we might be able to challenge them and try and defeat them in order to stay up. They were fighting relegation last season, and for good reason, but if you have a look at their squad, it is somewhat stronger now than it was the last time we faced them. Gorgie's squad is mostly the same, apart from a few changed personnel, but some of the existing personnel from last time, like Rory McCoy, Jorgen Bjornland, Frankie McRanald and Adolfo Kardakia are somewhat stronger. Meanwhile, there's gains for Rice Acton, but meanwhile they've also lost their first choice keeper from last time, Patrick Linner. So he has Lutz McKilver in place for the 29 year old. But, the thing is we've also cha traded our keeper as well, so both teams have lost the highly skilled goalkeepers that caused a nil-nil shutout in Season 33. Plenty of new faces too, and Dionysus Kiparisis, Maurice Simington, Bartomero Camello, and Scott Bossenson. Scott Bossenson looks extremely promising at 197. Still, players like Fraser Inkster, Quilentaro Kandal, and Octavian Pamphil, as well as Jeff Newell, of course, will still be a challenge for this night's squad. They still have a very strong background in the squad and will be a real challenge. Now, let's see our next opponents. Uh, these are the opponents. This is the first time I think we have faced a team that's come down from Division 4, as the last time we were Division 5, there were no relegated teams from that division. Our fourth opponents in this division are P4AHFC, managed by Rafa for PM from West Berkshire. He has a very strong squad at 10 bars, with 17 players, average age of 23, so this looks quite menacing really, and that 128 million squad value is the highest in the division. P4AHFC have been a yo-yo club, and have been thick picking between Divisions 4 and 5, over the past few seasons. As to that, Rafa for pm seems like a strong manager, so this will be a very difficult game, especially when you see the team he has at his disposal. Well, this will be fun. Rodrigo Leonardo is the highest skilled player in the division at 15 bars at 29 years of age. Shoot, this is a really, really strong squad, especially with Eusebio Sierra up front, Javier Masha in the back line, along with Lennox Main. However, they aren't quite an incomplete squad, and they do have a massive Achilles heel in their goalkeeper, Les Niedermeyer, who is still a developing goalkeeper, but he's just double jumped at 20 years of age, so hopefully he doesn't have a season like Ant Connolly did last time, but Niedermeyer is one year younger than Ant Connolly. I can see this team causing all sorts of problems, and I think they are the promotion favourites to go straight back up to Division 4. Now, let's see the next opponents, who I feel we may have a decent chance against despite their strong squad. It's another familiar opponent in Real El Madrid, an opponent we beat twice the last time the two sides met in the same division, despite the fact that they have a stronger squad than us. And they still do in a way, their, their squad is developing nicely with some very talented young players. But, we've managed to get the better of them quite a lot of the times, apart from the first time we met each other. Therefore, I could consider Real El Madrid and the double header later this season a must win double header if we are to stay in this division. They have a very balanced squad of Alexis Carcel and Goal, now 31 years of age and 11, 11 skilled. Most of the players are 11 skilled apart from two. Striker David David, who has now changed to the number 9 shirt for the upcoming season, having previously worn 24. And Jarrett Fowler is the 12th bar defender that they previously signed when we first met each other. However, this doesn't phase us. As a stronger squad and with very high form last time around, they still couldn't manage to beat us and we walked all over them. Hopefully the current side can do the same, despite our keeper weakness compared to last time. Next we have Sham, a 64 million econ rated squad, but their 10 bar squad strength is masked by recent youth and they are actually more of 11 bars. 
their manager is from the same location that other Crafting's manager was previously and they have an average age of 27. Let's see the squad because it is a very very strong squad and probably also one of the promotion favourites for the upcoming season. It is also important to note that their manager has only been in charge since the middle of last season after coming back from the game so it is impossible to know how good he actually is but he has had a previous spell on the game. They have one of the best keepers in the division in Cornelius Horsch. The 29-13 keeper is going to be a very difficult keeper to break down especially when he's got a strong back line in front of him in Amparo, Cortez, De Castro and Franschek. The midfielders Fabio Mirko and Julian Minto are the main pairing. Up front Jonathan Sidwell will be their main attacking threat. Overall their team is quite strong and I think will be causing problems unless they prove to have a somewhat predictable manager where everyone can guess his tactics. But anyway, let's see who our final opponent is. And it's a familiar opponent who we've never beaten before. In fact we've lost every single game against them. Golfs. Yes, it's the King Punks. For the first time since Season 32, which is the last time in Division 5, we've been paired up with the King Punks, and I think it's the most likely opponent that we're always going to be paired up against due to the locations. Therefore, it's imperative that we manage to beat the King Punks sometime during this video series, hopefully by the first game of this season, as the King Punks are the first opponents we have to face this season. Let's see what changes we made to the King Punks team the last time we met them. Well, their star striker Mancio Guerra is now 36 and looking to retire. Charlie Sanders, their goalkeeper, is still the strongest in the division though, at 14 bars, and he'd be very difficult to break down. Brent Alms, they have a decent backup at 27 years old, but the age of Charlie Sanders means there'll probably be a bit of confusion over who will actually end up playing. Antar Franco, their free kick taker, is also retiring. They have lost Xiao Cao recently, so their midfield is somewhat lacking, but Blake Jack and Blake Knott have both matured the first team players. Peter Falcon has also matured and has probably made a very, very scary looking defence. This team is going to be very difficult to break down when we've got them first up at home at the Supermassive Black Hole. Our fixture list reads the King Punks as the first game. We then have an away match against P4AHFC followed by a home match against Champ, so we have a very difficult start to life back in Division 5 with our unbeaten record at real threat of being ended. However, after that we have to play Gorgie Fissel which I believe we have the home game first, so that shouldn't be as difficult as the away game. Following that, we have back-to-back -back games against Blue Force and Deep, and it's the middle part of the season where we really need to make our push for survival. But, in the division below, there is a very freshening squad by the name of BOR Bears, which has valued over 200 million Econ, and should gain promotion this season. And I feel we may have hit, just hit the first major stumbling block of the team's progress up the division ladders. This is going to be a very difficult time for us, because I want to survive this season, but it means crossing swords with a team that's much stronger than us. BOR Bears could be our biggest threat to getting into the Ultimate League top flight. So then, this is what the division looks like. We are teams flying up for Division 520's Blue Force, Deep, Gorgie Fistle, Knights of Sardinia FC, P4 AH FC, Real Ale Madrid, Sham and the King Punks. The first round of fixtures sees Real Ale Madrid at home to Blue Force, Deep taking on Gorgie Fistle, Sham take on P4AHFC and Knights of Southern UFC are at home to the King Punks. So, in the next episode, where we'll we taking on the King Punks at home for the first time since Season 32, it will be a very difficult game, but see you guys then.